school counselors at Croton Harmon High School. Um, I am with tonight, I am with our Director of Guidance and Assistant Principal, Mr. Mark Maxim. Hi everybody, my voice is not wonderful tonight, so they're going to be speaking for me, but you're in good hands and I'll be here to listen. So there's Mark and we have uh, Zoha Nadim, one of our other counselors. Good evening, everybody. How are you? Welcome. And we're excited to present to you tonight. And Kirby Mosenthal, our third counselor. Welcome, everyone. Thanks so much for being here. Okay, and if I could just stay on mute, um, we will be um, answering any questions that you have at the end. Um, you can put questions in the chat box um, if you have a question that pops up, if you, if you find that easier. If not, um, you can unmute yourself at the end um, and we can address any questions that you may have. Um, you'll see the uh, tonight's agenda on our um, first slide here. Um, tonight, we're going to be um, reviewing some um, just basic graduation requirements, um, regents exam requirements that are needed for graduation. We're going to be going over all of the course options for your children for here. Now, keep in mind, this is a parent night for current ninth graders and current 10th graders. Um, so we'll be going experiments on the options for both of those grade levels. Um, we'll be discussing different um, planning ahead options, different things that um, will be coming up for your in the next year. Um, and we're also going to be discussing different academic emotional supports uh, that we have available um, at the high school and um, just resources for you. And why, can, oh, here we go, okay, <laughs> thank you. Um, so first off is graduation requirements. So every student in order to graduate from Croton Harmon High School, needs to have a minimum of 22 credits in order to graduate. And that's broken down um, by specific um, regulations from New York State um, and different academic areas. So uh, we will be, the school counselors will be um, meeting, we conduct annual meetings with every student where we review their um, current courses, recommendations for next year, um, and to ensure that they are meeting all graduation requirements. Also keep in mind, I meant to mention um, when I started, um, in addition to this, um, in addition to this presentation being recorded, this, this presentation, this slide presentation is already on our website, um, the guidance website under the presentations tab. So you can always refer back to that if, um, if you need. Uh, in addition to credits, um, students are required to complete, and this is a Croton Harmon graduation requirement. Students are, um, they need to complete 25 hours of community service in order to graduate. Those um, service hours um, can be counted starting from September of freshman year. And we do recommend that students um, complete their 25 hours. Um, by the end of their first semester of senior year. And then you'll also see um, our website listed. We have a lot of um, important pertinent information um, on our website. Um, so always please refer to Okay, so um, Regents exams. So students are required to have a minimum of um, five Regents exams in order to graduate, and they are called the four plus one option. The required four students need a 65 or higher on the following exams. So there's one ELA English Regents exam, and that's given at the end of junior year. There is, a, uh, they need one math Regents exam, one science Regents exam, and one social studies. They need to earn a 65 or higher um, to um, get the Regents exam credit. Now, the one option can come from um, different, different um, subject areas. So students will need to score a 65 or higher on any of the following exams. 
So either an additional math exam, an additional science, an additional social studies, or um, career development, um, which is the, um, the CDOS credential. Now, for students um, for the past two years due to COVID, um, e-regents exams have been canceled. So the state has given exemptions for these exams, providing that the student has passed the course. So as long as the student has successfully passed the course, they have received an exemption for that regents exam. So students will not have to go back to take regents exams that they have already um, in classes that they've already completed. Um, so I just wanted to let you know that um, for transcript purposes, that looks it's it's an E on um, the transcript, uh, which stands for exemption. Okay. Uh, next, I'm going to have um, Zoha speak, and she's going to talk about the different course selections for um, the different academic departments. Hi, everybody. Yeah, so we're moving into course selections for next year, uh, starting with our core subject area of English. Um, English is a required course that all students are required to enroll in, and they must earn four credits in order to graduate. So all students are enrolled in some form of English throughout the course of their high school career. For grade 10, the option is to take on English 10. There is an honors option that is mentioned in our course catalog, which we'll be touching um, on in a little bit later. But these guidelines of what an honors option looks like is written in our course catalog, and our teachers also go over it with our students. Um, and then for grade 12, you have the option of enrolling in the traditional English 11 course, and then the AP is also offered, which is the AP English Language and Composition course. There is a summer reading that is required for all English, English courses at each grade level, um, and this information is available to students uh, prior to them enrolling in the course. The English elective option for um, our students is the creative writing course. It's a full year elective, and it's open to our students um, as they're moving along with their English courses. And then next we will get into, I'm sorry, it's not moving ahead. Why am I frozen here? Bear. There we go. There we go. So social sorry. studies. <laughs> awesome. Social studies is a similar concept. You are, students require four credits earned in order to graduate, meaning they're enrolled in some form of social studies throughout the course of their high school career. For grade 10, they have the option of moving from global one to global two, or they can enroll in the AP World History course. For grade 11, it's a similar situation. You can do the traditional US history or the AP course of AP US history, which both of the AP courses culminate in an AP exam at the end of the school year. Um, and then for global two, you have your global two regions as Ms. Thibodeau mentioned. And then for US history, you have the US history regions. And then also there are electives for social studies. There are two half year electives. The first one is sports and society. And then the other one is protests and revolution. Moving on to science, um, depending, this is important to take note of, depending on the student's math level, um, the recommendation given to the students and us by their teacher and their previous coursework, students may choose from the following courses. Um, so in the grade 10 uh, column, you'll see a bunch of variety of courses that is appropriate for the student in terms of where they are, um, what their needs are and what they feel comfortable with taking on. Um, and then the grade 11 list is there as well. There is a note for the science research program. This is taken in conjunction with a science course. Science research is not um, a required course, but students take it alongside a required science course. This is a three-year program that starts in 10th grade and the optional credit can be earned through SUNY Albany. Um, and typically when students are interested in, in this, they see their counselor and we sort of give them more in-depth information about how they can kind of fit this into their schedule with a science course. 
Moving on to math, again, um, all students are given a recommendation and their requests are reviewed by their current teacher to see if they'll be in uh, the appropriate course. Um, and it gives you a breakdown of one to the next. So introductory algebra, students will then move on to algebra one. Um, if they've mastered algebra one, then they're moving on to geometry or the non-regents applied geometry. Um, and then again, as you can see, once one course is successfully completed, you move on to the next um, course. Math electives are computer science, which is a half year course alongside computer science two. Then we have statistics for the full year, AP statistics and AP computer science A. Thank you, Zoha. Okay, moving on to um, world language. Um, we highly recommend that uh, students continue with world language. Um, one credit of language is required for graduation purposes. Um, but many colleges are looking for a minimum of uh, minimum of two to three years of the same language. So we absolutely continue uh, recommend that students do continue on and also consider starting an additional world language if they um, really enjoy uh, world, learning world language. Physical education must be taken throughout the four years. So your child will be enrolling in phys ed again next year as well. And for the rising sophomore parents, um, we do recommend that the health requirement is taken in 10th grade. That is a New York State requirement. It is a half year course, so it's a semester course. Um, it doesn't have to be taken in 10th grade, but we do recommend um, that students take that in the 10th grade. And then we have a variety of art and music classes. Um, these can be taken um, depending on the course. Certain art and music classes can satisfy the one credit of art or that they need for graduation. Um, the courses that have the asterisk next to them are the courses that satisfy that art music graduation requirement. Uh, the other music and art courses, um, we, uh, they're considered uh, elective credit. For the freshman parents in the audience, um, we have uh, had two sophomore year. So things that um, your, your child should be um, doing the rest of this year and will be doing next year. Um, we highly, highly recommend that students continue getting involved in areas of interest to um, continue building their resume. Um, and this includes school activities, community service, jobs, um, you know, anything to, to build uh, in on those strengths and those interests of, of your child. For um, guidance curriculum and, and things that we will be doing um, individually with your and, and in groups with your children is career exploration in sophomore year. Um, we have a program called Naviance that the freshmen will actually be introduced to um, in a couple of weeks. Um, and part of Naviance, Naviance is a, is a career and interest um, inventory and college search um, inventory uh, uh, um, computer program. So um, our focus with our guidance curriculum with sophomores is um, helping them figure out their different skills and their different interests and helping them link it to um, different careers and um, different uh, career research opportunities. In the past, we've had career representatives and we've had professionals in the field come and speak with our students. Since COVID, we have kind of put that on, um, you know, on, on hold, um, but hopefully we'll be starting up those shortly as well. Starting in sophomore year, we, we do start standardized testing. Um, there is a test called the PSAT-10. That is a college board test. So it's a practice to the practice SAT. So the, the PSAT um, uh, and MSQT test is given to juniors, um, but the college board did design a pre-pre-PSAT um, a test. <laughs> to help students start getting um, familiar with standardized testing and sitting for a, you know, a long period of time. 
Um, for the sophomore parents in the audience tonight, um, we are giving that exam on Wednesday, March 24th. Um, I believe there will be something, if it wasn't in this past weekly, it will be in this coming weekly um, about that exam. Um, and if for the freshman parents and the sophomore parents, um, definitely if your child has testing accommodations through the school, so through a 504 plan or an IEP, um, to contact the, your counselor um, if you have not yet done so, and we can talk about um, applying for testing accommodations for those standardized tests. And now I'm gonna introduce Kirby Mosenthal. Hello everyone. Um, so as we look ahead to junior year, you can see we have a very full slide here um, because there is a lot going on for our rising juniors. Um, but one of the options beyond the courses you've already heard about are courses through um, VHS Learning, the virtual high school. So we do have some online courses available. These are online through application only. So students must fill out an application when they meet with their counselor during course selection. These courses um, are for students who are hoping to take a class that we do not currently offer at the high school. So if students browse the course catalog through VHS Learning and something is appealing to them, they should certainly speak with their counselor to see if that would be an option um, for next year. We also have um, classes available through the uh, BOCES Tech Center. Um, these are a great opportunity for students to be involved with kind of more experiential learning in certain trades. Um, there are, you know, classes in auto mechanics, culinary, fashion, HVAC, sports medicine, carpentry, um, you name it, they, they most likely have it. Uh, students actually spend half of their school day at the tech center in Yorktown. And then the second half of their school day at the high school taking um, the remainder of their graduation requirements. So it does work in their schedule. We provide transportation. Um, it's, it's a great opportunity. Students can apply for that as well when they meet with their counselor. Um, the PSAT, um, as Tanya was talking about the PSAT 10, the PSAT is for juniors. Um, that also is the same test for the National Merit Scholarship Qualifying Test. Um, so students who sit for that exam are automatically entered um, for that scholarship opportunity. It's given during the school day in the fall of junior year. Um, it's offered right at the high school and students can sign up in the guidance office. Um, it's, a, it's another great practice opportunity before taking the actual SAT exam. And speaking of, that brings us to the SAT and ACT. Um, so these are college entrance exams. Um, certain colleges require these, certain colleges don't. Um, during COVID, a lot of the test policies were um, altered for most of the colleges being test optional but we don't know in future years if certain colleges may start requiring these exams again. So we do recommend that all students sit for um, an SAT and or ACT at some point um, throughout high school. Uh, the colleges will take either test, an SAT or ACT. Um, there are some differences between them um, and we, we uh, will go over this more, especially, you know, in the beginning of junior year with the students so they can figure out which test might be better for them. Um, but this is the, really the year to kind of start exploring those tests and the testing timeline that works best for each individual student. Um, junior years also really spent going over the whole college search process with students. We start this process right in the fall. Um, we've actually already this year with the juniors pushed into all of their classes to start doing a college search with them using Naviance, the um, online tool that we subscribe to, to help students look at Croton specific data um, and to see which colleges might align with their interests, their goals, um, all the criteria that they're looking for. Um, and we also will have them, once they take that PSAT exam, they can use those test results to also start looking at um, certain colleges that might align. 
Um, the Naviance uh, program does have a parent um, uh, portion to it. The current sophomore parents have received an email with their login information and the current freshman parents will be receiving that um, shortly. So keep an eye out for that. But once you go in there, you can see all of the features that are available as well. And then um, actually starting this month, we are beginning to meet with our juniors. So that will happen next year as well. Between January through March, we meet with every single junior individually um, with them and their parents or guardians to start really talking um, specifically about their post-secondary goals, whether that's college, uh, gap year, employment, military, whatever the case might be. That's why we have those meetings with each family to, to discuss the process and what it looks like for them. Something else to be um, just kind of keeping on the radar is National Honor Society. Um, so this is an option for juniors if they would like to apply. Um, the application process happens in February of junior year. And that's because um, we take all the way through the first half of junior year to calculate the grade point average for our juniors and to look at their community service hours at that point in the year to make sure they have met a minimum of a 3.5 weighted average. Um, weighted average, meaning any AP courses the student took um, has some extra weight in that GPA calculation. Um, and the 40 hours of community service that are required for National Honor Society must be documented and approved in volunteer access by the February of uh, junior year. So those are the criteria. If a student has met both of those criteria at that point in time, then they can file an application to also demonstrate character and leadership qualities. And based off that whole application process, it will be determined if a student is eligible uh, for the National Honor Society. Okay, so we've, we've talked a lot about um, academics, but um, you know, of course, as counselors, one of our main roles is to support students in their social and emotional health as well. Um, these past few years especially have been extremely challenging and difficult. Uh, so we want to make sure that students and parents are aware that we're, we're here to support them um, beyond just academic and post-secondary planning as well. Um, and some of the ways that we do that is through our chat program. Uh, that's the Croton Harmon Advisory Program. Um, and in this program, small groups of students, about 12 to 15 students, will be paired with a faculty member. And they will stay with the same group all four years of high school to really develop that um, rapport and connection with that faculty member. So they can talk about current events, uh, things going on even in the school building to just have discussions and check-ins to see how things are going throughout the four years of high school. We also have helping period um, that is available every single day, Monday through Friday from 224 to 3 o'clock p.m. Um, during this time, students can go see any teacher for extra help. Um, whether it's to, you know, study for a test or review a paper, or just go ask a question or do homework there with someone to answer questions. It's a, an amazing opportunity. And if a student is, um, you know, falling behind or struggling in a class, a, a teacher does have the discretion to make that mandatory so that a student would need to check in with that teacher at least once a week during mandatory helping period. We also have a student assistance counselor, that's Allison Millen. Um, unfortunately, she couldn't be here tonight, um, but she does work full time in the high school um, with, grade, the, with the entire ninth through 12th grade classes. Um, and she is really working on education, um, prevention and counseling services, um, especially when it relates to drug and alcohol prevention. Um, but she is available for social emotional support for students as well. She's also the leader of our Teen Leadership Council for students. Um, the three school counselors, we've introduced ourselves. The three of us are here tonight. Um, 
we divvy up all the students alphabetically by last name, and we will stay with the same student all four years of high school. So that way we can really get to know them um, and hopefully work with them as a transition into high school and eventually out of high school as well. And we have two school psychologists at the high school. Um, that's Eric Rosen and Leandra Ramirez. Both of them are available for students who have any uh, social emotional needs at any point in time. We also wanted to uh, make sure that all parents know that all the information that was discussed tonight and more can be found on our school counseling website, um, right on our high school website. When you go to departments, you hit on guidance and there will be an array of things ranging from the course catalog, the college planning guide, the direct link to Naviance, testing, presentation, calendars, and so much more valuable information that whenever time allows, you can sort of go through any questions that arrive. You can obviously always reach out to any of the counselors, but we wanted to make sure that you know that all this information is available right to you, right in our guidance tab. Um, and again, always feel free to reach out to your counselors. We're always here for you, always here to support your children and you as well. Um, and we want to thank you all for being here and taking the time to listen to all of this valuable information. And now we would like to open up the floor uh, to some questions that if anyone would like to come off and mute, unmute themselves or put your questions right in the chat, we would be happy to answer any question that anybody has.